Hey everyone, it's Sarah and welcome to my crochet channel. Now today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to crochet our quillo. And what a quillo is, is it's a bag, it's a pillow with a blanket inside. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? These are great for traveling or um, great for spending the days at hospitals, friends' houses, sleepovers. They're great to keep in the car for emergencies. And there's lots of neat ideas that you can do with a Quillo. The grandkids and kiddos will love them too. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this project in two steps. Today we're going to learn how to crochet the, the uh, bag portion of the Quillo. And the bag itself measures about 16 inches wide and about 12 inches deep. We're going to learn how to crochet and form the bag portion. Then in step two, we're going to learn how to crochet the blanket, how to attach them together, and how to fold it, because that's the real trick of a quillow, is knowing how to get that blanket back inside that bag. <laughs> this is a free crochet pattern on my blog, and as always, you'll find that free pattern link down in the notes underneath this video. To make a quillow, and that includes the bag and the blanket portion, you're going to need 20 ounces of two different colors. I'm going to be using this Red Heart Super Saver Ombre. I believe it's called Jazzy. It's in different shades of pink, and you can see that on the project where I've been working on it, where it goes from a dark pink to a light Pink. You can use any two colors that you want to. I just thought the ombre would work really pretty with this project. So you're going to need 20 ounces of one color and 20 ounces of a white or another color. I like contrasting with the white because I think it makes the pink really pop out. But again, you don't have to make this pink. You don't have to make this white. You can use whatever colors that you want to, as long as it's a medium number four weight yarn. I like using the Red Heart Super Saver because it's a good sturdy yarn, and this bag's going to get drug around quite a bit, probably, especially since I'm making this one for my car. So, you need 20 ounces of two different color yarns. We're going to be stitching today with our eye hook, which is a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook, and then you'll need your scissors and, of course, a needle for weaving in all those ends. Now remember, for today's video, we're going to be making just the bag, and then for step number two, we'll make the blanket, put them together, and also learn how to fold it. So for the bag, we're going to begin, you can start with your main color or your white, it doesn't matter, that's totally up to you. I'm going to start with my pink, we're going to make our slip knot, and we're going to chain 32 chains. And I do recommend that you chain this beginning chain just a little bit loose, we don't want any puckering on our bag. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And see how I'm stitching those loosely? Once you have chained your 32 chains, we're going to stitch a row of half double crochets. We'll begin in the second chain from the hook. One, two, yarn over, go in, pull up a loop you'll have three chains or three loops on your hook. Yarn over and go through all three of those loops. And now we're just going to stitch one half double crochet in each of the chains across.
And so I'm going to continue stitching one half double crochet in each of those chains working all the way across. I've stitched that one half double crochet in each chain starting in the second chain from the hook so I have 31 half double crochets. I'm going to chain one and turn and the chain one here and throughout this project does not count as a stitch. We're going to begin by stitching a half double crochet in the first stitch. We're going to skip the next stitch and then in the next stitch we're going to stitch what's called a half double crochet V stitch. So we'll stitch a half double crochet, chain one, and half double crochet in the same stitch. And this is going to be our repeat across. We're going to skip the next stitch and then stitch a half double crochet V stitch, which is a half double crochet, chain one, and half double crochet. And we'll repeat this across. And see how that looks? So we're going to continue to repeat. Skip the next half double crochet and then in the next half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet, which is a half double crochet V stitch in the next stitch. So we'll skip one, half double crochet V stitch. Skip one, half double crochet V stitch. Skip one and half double crochet V stitch. And we'll work this all the way across this row. So I have worked those, skip one, half double crochet V stitch in the next, all the way across. You're going to have 14 of your V stitches. When you get to the end, you're going to have two stitches left. We're going to skip the next stitch and half double crochet in the next, which is the last. Now we're not going to chain one here because we're going to change colors. Let me grab my white here. We're going to bring in our second color. We're going to leave our first color attached. And always do your chain one after your color change, or you'll have a little bit of a bump there that's the wrong color. All right, so we're going to turn our work. We're going to half double crochet in that half double crochet. There we go. And now we'll go to the chain one space of the first half double crochet V stitch and we'll stitch a half double crochet V stitch. Half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet in that chain one space. And this is what we'll do across our row. We'll go to the chain one space and stitch a half double crochet V stitch. And we'll repeat this all the way across, stitching a V stitch, a half double crochet V stitch in each of the chain one spaces of the V stitch from the previous row. And we'll do this all the way across till we reach that last half double crochet. We did one half double crochet and then a half double crochet V stitch in each of the chain one spaces of the V stitches from the previous row. We'll do this all the way across till we reach that last half double crochet. I've stitched a half double crochet V stitch in each of those chain one spaces and again you'll have 14 half double crochet V stitches. 
Now we're to the end of our row and we're going to half double crochet in that last half double crochet. Now we're not changing colors, so we're going to go ahead and chain one and turn. Let's get all our strings out of the way because we've got lots of strings here. And so what we're going to do for row four is we're just going to repeat row three. We'll half double crochet in the half double crochet. Then we'll stitch a half double crochet V stitch in each of the chain one spaces of the V stitches from the previous row. And again, those are half double crochet V stitches. Half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet in the chain one space. It makes a nice compact stitch for this bag. <laughs> there we go. My hook didn't want to grab onto it. <laughs> Alrighty, so I'm just going to repeat stitching my half double crochet V stitches in each of those chain one spaces moving across. I stitched those half double crochet V stitches across and then I stitched my half double crochet in that last stitch. Now we're going to change back to our color one, and so or whatever color that you're choosing, the first color we started with. We're going to join that in. We're going to be trailing our yarn up the side. We're not going to cut it. And I'm gonna snug that down. Then I'm gonna chain one, make sure everything's snug down nice and tight, and turn. The key to keeping your sides from puckering when you're trailing your yarn up the side is not to pull that too tightly, but also don't let it gape so that it gets in the way. It'll be stitched over and tidied up when we complete the bag. All right, so now we've switched back to our first color, which is mine is my pink, and we're just going to repeat these two rows just like we did for the white. We'll have double crochet in the first half double crochet, and then we'll stitch a half double crochet V stitch in each of those chain one spaces moving across. Just like we did down here. When we've completed that, we'll stitch a half double crochet in the last half double crochet, chain one, turn, and repeat. So we have two rows, just like we did on this white. I completed those two rows with my first color, repeating what we did here with rows three and four. We repeated that with rows five and six using a different color. We stitched our last half double crochet. We'll bring our white back in. There we go. Snug that down, make sure that white's not too tight, chain one, and turn. And so what we're going to do to form the body of our bag or our pillow bag is we're going to continue to repeat row three and row four for 44 more rows. We'll change colors every two rows to form our stripes. I'll be changing colors every two rows of white, two rows of pink, two rows of white, two rows of pink, and remember to do your chain one after your color change. And so we're going to repeat row three and row four for 44 more rows, alternating our colors every two rows. I have completed my additional 44 rows which gives me a total of 52 rows, changing colors every two rows. And this is the way it should look. Now we're going to put a trim on it. I'm going to be stitching the trim, which we're going to do a row of half double crochet around each of the four sides of our rectangle. And I went ahead and changed to my pink. I cut my white off 
and I did my chain one with my pink. I did want to show you the side of our bag where we carried our yarn. We need it to lay nice and smooth. No big gapes and not pulling tightly. You want it to have a little bit of give, but you don't want it to be gapy. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to place a half double crochet in each of the stitches working across the top of our bag. One half double crochet in each of the stitches working across the top of our bag. And we'll work all the way across this top row and then when we get to this corner we'll do three in the corner and then we'll evenly stitch down the side. I stitched across the top stitching a half double crochet in each stitch. This brings us to our first corner and we want to stitch three half double crochets in that corner. One, two, and three. And now we're going to evenly stitch down the side of our bag. So we're going to try to stitch in the stitches, not the holes. We don't want to stitch in these holes or we'll have pulling and also, we want it to be a good sturdy bag, and this stitching that we're doing around the edge is what's going to help that bag hold its shape. All right, so we're gonna go in the sides of the stitches and stitch our half double crochets, evenly stitching down the side of the bag. And see how I'm going between loops of the stitch? That's just gonna give you a much sturdier bag to hold your blanket. And I'll continue doing this down the whole side. I have evenly half double crocheted up the side of the bag. I stitched those three single crochets in the corner and now I'm going to stitch across the other end. And this is where we began with our beginning chain. And so we have stitches, we can stitch those half double crochets in. And so I'm going to stitch a half double crochet in each of those stitches. Then again, I'll stitch three half double crochets in the corner and then work my way up the other side of this bag. I am really loving how the ombre is working for this project. I can hardly wait to get the blanket done. I bet that's going to be absolutely gorgeous. All right, so I've got some half double crochets to do here. I'm going to do half double crochets across the bottom and then half double crochets up the side of my bag. I stitched up across the bottom, stitching a half double crochet in each stitch and stitch three in that corner. Now I wanted to show you how to do this side where we're going to be stitching over these yarns that we trailed across. And it's really quite simple. You go in the area where you want to stitch your half double crochet and make sure that you stitch around that edge. You want to grab that yarn as you're going around the edge of the bag and just stitch your half double crochets right over it. This is going to secure them in place, but also still let them have a little bit of stretch that you'll need for your bag. And so you'll work down this the same way you did the first side. Whoops, I went in a hole by accident there. There we go. We wanna go through the stitch Make sure we grab that yarn that's being trailed and stitch our half double crochet. Now there might be a time where you have to go in a hole, but it's really is best when you're stitching up a side like this 
that you try not to go in those holes, especially with this project, because we don't want any pulling or gaping. So I'm gonna continue working down this side and join back to my first half double crochet where I started. I completed that last side, stitching half double crochets evenly up the side, and you can see that it covered up those yarns that we carried beautifully. I stitched those three half double crochets in the corner, and then I joined to my first half double crochet and chained one. We're not going to cut that yarn just yet. And what we're going to do is we're going to fold the bag up. And we want the inside of our bag on the outside because we're going to stitch down the side and then we'll stitch up the next side and around the top for our bag opening. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put these two corners together. And we're going to stitch single crochets down the side of our bag, joining the two sides together, the front and the back. So we'll go through this side and this side and stitch single crochets working all the way down the side till we reach the corner and then we'll tie off. Now remember, we evenly single crocheted, so that doesn't mean you're going to have the exact number of stitches. You want to just try to make it nice and neat. I stitched single crochets all the way down, stitching it together till I get to this corner. I'm gonna cut my yarn, but I'm gonna leave myself just a little bit more because I wanna make sure that this corner is completely closed. Let me grab one of my needles here. There we go. And I'll thread that on that needle. And I'm kinda open that corner a little bit because I wanna make sure when I weave this in that that corner is going to stay closed. And don't worry if it's a little bit messy right here because this is the inside of the bag. And I've woven that in or tidied that up a lot more than I usually do because like I said, I don't want that end to come open. All right, now I'm going to do a knot here. I don't usually do that in crochet, but on this I really want to because I really want that yarn and that to stay put and that and there not to be a hole in the corner of this bag. There we go. Nice and well that didn't stay. Let's do that again. There we go. Nice big knot right in that corner and we'll cut that off. All right, so this side is done. All right, so now we're gonna move to the other side. And we're not going to join our yarn to the top, we're gonna to join to the bottom corner. So I'm going to join to the bottom corner because we're going to stitch up, and then we're going to stitch around the opening of the bag. All right, so I'm going to go to the corner, make sure everything's laying nice and flat, and I'm gonna go in those two stitches at the bottom, but I am going to leave a little bit of yarn because I want to have that so I can close that opening like we did on this other corner, all right? So we're gonna pull that through, do a little chain one to get us where we need to be, and then we're just gonna work up the side of this the way we did the other side, stitching single crochets across, joining the front to the back, of our bag. So 
So I'll go ahead and stitch this all the way up and then I'll come back in and tidy up this corner. I stitched this side up like I did this side. And I tidied up this corner like I did this one with my needle. We're not going to cut this yarn, but we are going to flip out our bag. There's our corner. Here's our other one. All right. Here's our bag. There we go. It will be a real stretchy bag because it's got to fit that blanket. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come over here where we tied off from the side. We chained one, and what we're going to do, because we want the top of our bag to be sturdy, we're going to single crochet around the edge of the bag. And so we'll just place one single crochet in each of those half double crochet stitches. And I do recommend that you stitch this just a little bit tighter, not real tight, but just a little bit tighter than what you've been stitching. It'll give it a much better appearance. And we want a nice edge because we're going to have one of our handles sewn to the bag and the other handle will be sewn to the blanket. But I will show you today how to do the handles. So I'm just going to single crochet around the edge of my bag opening for a nice and tidy appearance. I stitched a single crochet in each of the half double crochets around just to make the top of our bag just a little bit sturdier to hold the handle. All right, so I'm going to cut my yarn, tie that off, and I'll use my needle to weave that in. The next thing we're going to do is the handles, and that'll be the last part for step one. You're going to need to make two handles, and we'll be making the handle using two strands of our yarn and we want to use two strands so we have a good sturdy handle to hold that bag when we have our blanket inside of it. I want you to start with about an 8 inch tail because we'll need that to sew it onto the bag. Make our slip knot and we're going to chain 26 chains. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. And again, don't stitch this too tightly or the edge of your handle will pucker around a little. We're going to stitch a half double crochet in the second chain from the hook. Then we'll stitch one half double crochet in each of those chains across. One half double crochet in each of the chains across will get you 25 half double crochets because we started in the second chain from the hook. We're going to chain one and turn and then stitch one half double crochet in each of the half double crochets across. And you can see this is going to get us a really nice sturdy handle. So I have stitched one half double crochet in each of those half double crochets across. We're going to cut our yarn, again a nice long tail, so we can sew it onto our bag. We'll tie that off. So we have a long set of yarn tails on each end so we can sew this onto our bag. Make sure that you make two handles for your bag. We're only going to be putting one on and the other one will sew on once the blanket is attached to the bag. To attach this first handle, all you're going to do is center it in the center of your bag. 
and it's up to you how close you want your handles to be. If you prefer your handle to be like this or a little farther out. I like mine just a little bit farther out. I threaded both of those yarns on my needle and we're going to go through that single crochet row. And if you'll notice, I like to go through down here through the stitch, not just the loops to attach the handle. And that's going to give us a much sturdier handle on our bag. We want to go all the way around and just stitch some loop stitches. All right, now before I finish that, I like to look at it to see how it looks, how it's going to lay, and then I'll just go back the way I came and make sure, whoops, lost one of my threads. All right, let me get those back together. <clears throat> there we go. That's why we need a good length of yarn on there because we want to make sure that handle is going to stay attached. And make sure you get a stitch on each end the thread. There we go. Make sure you get a stitch on this end and on this end because that's where it's going to be pulled the most. All right, let's get those threads through. I'm going to go ahead and clip that one that got longer somehow so that I can weave this in nicely. <clears throat> I'm going to go under there and then I'm going to go back across those stitches. And there's a lot of stitches there, so we might have to do it that way. The most important thing is that you want this handle to stay attached. There we go. I think this one's going to because I can hardly get that thread through there. All right, let me go ahead and clip that. Nice and attached. All right, so then we'll do the other one, spacing it out from here, making sure that it looks nice and neat. And I'll attach it the same way I did the other one. And so this is the completion of step one of our Quillo blanket in a bag. We made the bag and we attached one of the handles. We do have the second handle made, but this handle will be attached to the blanket. When I complete step two, I'll go ahead and link that up here and also put the link down in the notes so that you can go right over to step two when you complete step one. <music>